Hi, I'm Nell Sanders, and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. Historically, women haven't had it easy when it comes to equality and acquiring certain human rights. In response, women have coordinated and marched in protests that have led to important social change. March is Women's History Month, so this week I'm looking at women's protests under a historical lens as context to understanding the current movements in our nation. So what have women's protests accomplished over the course of US history? Let's start with the women's suffrage movement in the early 20th century. 1913 marked the first women's march on Washington, led by Lucy Burns and Alice Paul. Seven years later, women gained the right to vote, in large part because of the efforts of the valiant suffragettes. In 1966, the National Organization for Women, or NOW, was created, which backed some of the biggest women's movements in the 20th and 21st centuries. Continuously since 1923, women's activists and now have been trying to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment, which has been reintroduced in Congress every session since 1982, but never passed. Consecutive marches for women's lives have been the largest civil rights displays in US history. Finally, and most recently, the Women's March on Washington post-President Donald Trump's election broke the records for US protests with three to four million people joining in protests and marches around the country. I got to sit down with Kate Todd Hunter, Kate Fontaine, and a member from the Feminist Collective to discuss their take on women's history. You're, you're talking about more than half the human population. Uh, and so you, if you ignore women's history or if you ignore the role of gender, you are not getting, it's not just half the story, you're just not getting the story. Women's history isn't often taught at the high school level, but certain teachers at NHS try and emphasize it in their classes. You know, the study of, of gender, especially women's experiences, it really has to be woven throughout, you know, the, the whole course. So there's been a movement to teach gender history in, in the classroom. And so Women's History Month is really important because it focuses on the contributions that people that identify as women have made to society. Many people reacted negatively to the new president and his administration and fear women's rights are in jeopardy. Well, there's, there's certainly been progress made. You know, there's been movements for reproductive rights. There's been movements for um, equality in the workplace, for equal pay, for equal work. So those are all important things that are focuses of different women's rights movements. Right now, there's a pretty big focus because we, we have, we've had a change in our political leadership at the national level. And so there is a, a resurgence of a women's movement, which we saw with the women's marches. Reproductive justice is so in threat um, right now. Under the current administration, we talk a lot about the history of access to um, reproductive care and women's health care. In these new political times, women's protests are increasing in prevalence and size. It will be interesting to see if these modern large-scale protests will have the same large-scale impact as seen in previous women's movements. Again, I'm Nell Sanders, and this was Tell It Like It Is.